in the last two or three weeks, I've spoken to numerous central bankers, all who say that the next move in interest rates will be down. The issue is when. Well, we uh, are very confident that the uh, world economy is now poised for this soft landing we have been dreaming uh, for. And, uh, are we there? It, oh, we are coming there, yes. We are coming there. I expect to see by mid-year interest rates uh, going in the direction inflation has been going in uh, for the last uh, uh, year. Now, this being said, Remember what we learned over the period of time since the pandemic. Expect the unexpected. So we have to be always tuned to carefully monitor what is uh, happening around the world and have the agility to respond, uh, not ever be caught unprepared. All right, so the soft landing is a reality. Mm -hmm and rates will come down. But can you explain why the US has performed so strongly? Because you know, this level of job creation at a time of very high interest rates, dramatically quickly raised, mm -hmm. and yet growth is also being revised upwards. What's going on? Well, uh, what has happened is first, uh, the US has benefited from becoming a very important source of energy, oil and gas. So when the war in Ukraine started and Europe found itself in a very difficult place because it had to move away from reliance on Russia, the U.S. did not have this uh, problem at all. Not only that, the U.S. is now an exporter of energy, one. Two, uh, during the pandemic, the U.S. government supported households and businesses quite generously. By doing so, it created buffers and people just had money to spend. That retained demand in the U.S. higher. And three, as a result of that, we have seen the job market in, in the U.S. quite tight, plus we now have a different attitude to jobs, which made it harder for those who hire to dictate conditions, as they used to do prior to the pandemic. How much of all of that good picture is in jeopardy with the election? Well, the, the uh, world is uh, this year as a whole in a very interesting place. Half of the world population is going to vote, and of course, people in the United States are going to vote. Uh, what we see is a bit of uh, um, a you know, discussion around what is the right policy direction. Uh, but in the end of the day, the American people would select their president, and uh, as a result, we would have predictability of policy directions. So you're being stay, diplomatic here. Stay, 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 stay put. How can you be calm? How? Well, you know, we have learned through experience that um, the uh, economic fundamentals matter. And in the United States, they're strong. You have deep capital markets. Mm -hmm. You have a very dynamic economy, especially in new technologies, the so-called Magnificent Seven, the seven com companies that are driving artificial intelligence are all American. Uh, and you have the uh, ability of the uh, United States, of the economy of the United States, to quickly adjust. So, attractive for, for uh, investments, and we see it. Where do money go when there is trouble around the world? They go to the United States. And that will continue. And, and if we look, though, at the troubles in the world, now, obviously, we have the Middle East war underway at the moment. I, I mean, it is whatever the personal, whatever the suffering that's taking place, 
it seems as if the ability to ring fence the macroeconomic effects, and I hate saying this because the personal suffering is huge, but the macroeconomic effects have been fairly limited at the moment. Well, uh, for the world as a whole, but not for the part of the world directly affected. We have uh, looked into the impact on Gaza and West Bank, on the economies of uh, uh, Palestine, and it is horrendous. Uh, Gaza, the economy shrunk by 80%. West Bank, it shrunk by 22%. And for the uh, Middle East, North Africa region, we just downgraded our projections from October by half a percentage point. Growth is affected in this part of the world. Uh, what has not happened is to have massive spillovers for the rest of the world. Yes, what is happening in the Suez Canal uh, is creating a bit of anxiety, because it affects supplies, and we got really allergic to supply chain disruptions. Do you fear? But not majorly. Do you fear? I mean, if you look, okay, so you've got the actual conflict itself. You've got the spillover effects for Jordan, for Egypt, and for, for, for the region. And you've got, if you will, the, 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 uh, the Suez Canal and the, the, the sea. Where do you fear most? that things could get out of control? Well, I, I fear most uh, of a longevity of the conflict because it goes on and on. The risk of spillovers go up. And uh, right now we see a risk of spillover from the Suez Canal, uh, but if there are other unintended consequences in terms of where the fighting goes, uh, then uh, it can become much more problematic for the world as a whole. So uh, as a woman, as a mother, as a grandmother, I pray for peace, for the people that are affected and for the security of all of us. All right, now. If, to inelegantly turn, if I may, there's a lot of talk about AI. It's the great panacea. It's going to be magnificent. It's going to lead us all to the future. So why did the IMF come out with a report just before Davos, which basically said, hang on, not so fast. 40% of all jobs are going to be affected in some way. The developed world is going to improve in its benefits, and the developing world is screwed. Uh, so... Let me caveat a bit what you just said. Uh, what we presented in our report is the following. The shift to artificial intelligence is going to be like the Industrial Revolution in terms of scale and significance of impact, affecting 40% of jobs, either completely new jobs come or jobs get enhanced, or jobs disappear. This is like a tsunami hitting the labor market. And then we ask a question, are we ready? And what our report says, some countries, among them uh, United Arab Emirates, the Saudis, some, some countries are ready, but majority of nations, and it is primarily developing nations, are not. How do we look at readiness? We look at four things. First, digital infrastructure. Well, we all know that Africa, only half of the population has access to the internet. Second, skills and labor market mobility. Again, you look at parts of the world where investment in education is not only insufficient, but the pandemic put education back. Three, we looked at innovation, how much countries invest in research and development, and fourth, regulation and ethics. Across the board, across the board, more advanced economies are in a better position. Poor countries are not. Let me say 
What a fantastic foresight the Emirates had to establish Ministry for Artificial Intelligence in 2017, when most of the world was completely asleep right. on the switch. All right. Oh. Hang on, not so fast, not so fast. What do they need to do now? Uh, well, what they would need to do now is bring the rest of the world with you. Uh, and being a generous nation, invest in emerging markets, in developing economies to help them leapfrog. If we, if we get more nations ready to benefit from this technology, but also manage its negative potential consequences, misinformation, disinformation. The more we do for others, the better off you also right. will be. But which is the greater risk? Is it the economic issues, jobs, uh, restructuring of industries, or the misinformation and disinformation, or am I making a false parallel? Uh, you, you, you are touching on the two greatest uh, risks if we don't approach artificial intelligence responsibly. The first is uh, indeed not benefiting from artificial intelligence to lift up everybody. More inequality, if it comes from it, would be devastating for our future. But more inequality within countries and inequality across countries. So, and then you have the potential of artificial intelligence to create a parallel universe of lies and misconceptions. And again, we have to act responsibly. So let me change my, my message to UAA. Uh, lead the world in responsible, humanity-serving adoption of artificial intelligence. Uh, 